Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Tamara Todd and I'm a pro makeup artist from London. Today's video is a follow-up video, so-called part 2, on my makeup for hot and humid environment. So why did I want to make a part 2? Well guys, I have actually traveled to Mexico and I stayed in Tulum for a full two weeks. This was one of the hottest and humidest environments I have ever put my foot on. Some days the humidifier was showing 90% of humidity in the house. Guys, I have never experienced anything like it in my life. My friend had a few designer clothes that started to rot over one year her living in Tulum. This is just insane. So this is my hair in UK and we have a humid environment here too, but obviously it is nowhere near as hot as it was in Tulum. Now this is my hair in Tulum on a daily basis. I mean, I know my hair is colored and dry and I put a lot of moisture in it to keep it as healthy as I can but guys this <laughs> my hair has never looked like that in my whole entire life I woke up like a poodle every day when I travel to visit my friends to the places where they actually live I do zero research because I want to arrive into the place without any expectations whatsoever once you start researching about the place about the things that people do you already form some sort of a perspective perception about the place. What I prefer to do is just arrive and let my friends who live there guide me all through experiences and all of my friends are pretty clued up about things that are going on in the areas where they live. I've done zero research and I feel like I have arrived unprepared. First of all, I thought I'm going to a hot place, I will not need a hair dryer. In my mind, I thought that I will wash my hair and it will naturally dry. Wrong. I had no idea my hair can be as frizzy as it was in Tulum. Most of the times when we were going to the beach, the hair dryer was not needed because when you go to the sea, you know, you get you swim your hair, you get your hair wet, so it doesn't really matter. But on the nights where we went out, we have borrowed a hair dryer from a friend of ours and that made all the difference. So I have blow dried my hair straight, styled my fringe with the straighteners and then I've sprayed it really well with hairspray and the fringe actually lasted throughout the whole night, throughout the whole party, and it did get a little bit frizzier, so it's kind of got a little bit puffier, but it actually retained the shape throughout the night. So I did find a way of tackle my hair, but as I didn't take a hair dryer, we didn't want to borrow all the time. Most of my trip, my hair is like a poodle. Now I wanted to give you my first hand experience about the skincare and makeup side of things. In my original video from nine months ago, I keep mentioning thin layers and very lightweight moisturizers. My skin is more on a dry side, but I feel like in this environment, I barely needed any moisturizers whatsoever. Just because of the humidity and the sweat that you constantly produce, my skin did not feel dry at all. I washed my face in the morning, I have toned it, and then afterwards I would want to apply the serum. Stupidly, I did not have serum with me. I don't know what I was thinking when I was packing, I was more worried about the clothes and for my skincare and makeup I have packed bare minimum. When I travel, I don't normally pack my usual skincare. When you purchase a lot of makeup, you're always given testers for the creams, for the serums, for everything. So when I travel abroad, usually this is my time to try out the new things so all of the testing bottles tester bottles that I have I pack with me this trip one thing I would have packed was most definitely serum and the serum that I'm using is the serum from Charlotte Tilbury so that was a huge mistake on my part nevertheless we have managed without the serum so I was using this Alemis Pro Collagen Balm instead which is very lightweight it almost feels like water like it goes on the skin really nicely moisturizes the skin and it doesn't feel greasy or heavy underneath the Pro Collagen Balm I was using Charlotte Tilbury Tilbury's Eye Rescue Cream, which in my original uh, video I'm saying that I probably would try to avoid using it in a hot and humid environment, but this is the one I had with me and actually I really enjoyed how it felt on my skin. Right before we were leaving, I was using Simple SPF Protection, which was acting as a cream, because obviously it's in a cream form, and as SPF Protection. Normally I have my Charlotte Tilbury 
SPF 50 but again as I was traveling and trialing new things so I took this one normally you would need to apply a lot of it to be protected the full two fingers worth of product all over your face I just could not bring myself to have so much grease on my face so I probably would apply that much which technically is not gonna protect you 100% I honestly didn't care because everything was just sliding off your face throughout the day if you applied things in a really thick layer so I would have got away with three things eye cream serum that I didn't take and on top of the serum I would use the SPF cream protector I if I'm honest I would not even use the cream underneath because that would just be way too much layering in this environment your skin doesn't even feel dry it's so humid outside and you're producing some sort of like a light sweat all throughout the day that if you have the hyaluronic acid serum on you it should be more than enough to keep the moisture in for the body I took one of my favorite uh, creams from rituals Again, I have done a huge mistake. We were planning to go out to the salsa dance. We're in Latin America and it's all about the dancing. And it was a Tuesday where everybody goes to that open air bar and uh, there is a live music and a salsa is playing. And I thought, okay, I'm gonna take a shower and I wanna smell good for salsa. I put over my amazing ritual cream all over the body because I love the smell. My first dance, I am drenched in a sweat and I feel like I am drenched even more because of the cream. My whole body, all of the areas that were open, all of my arms literally felt like a mousse. Like that whole cream sealed the surface of my skin and with the sweat coming through, everything was just sliding around. So that was a big mistake on my part that I will never do again. I don't know. I think next time <laughs> when I'm gonna go out, I will not use any body cream, especially if I know that I will be dancing and sweating probably just no cream would have been better or if you must have a cream perhaps something that is water-based I feel like that cream from rituals have some silicone things in them uh, because it definitely have like sealed the top layer of my skin and whenever the sweat started to come through I was just all sticky and all sweaty and pff, I'm just never gonna do this again in Tulum right guys so now we reach the part about the makeup we went out on a few occasions and I feel like I have tackled my makeup routine pretty well. For the festival day zero, which was in the middle of the jungle, I danced. I danced so hard because the music was so good that my face was dripping in sweat, but nothing moved. So let me show you what I did to make sure that my makeup lasts all night. I washed my face, I have toned it, I have used the Elemis Pro Collagen Balm, Charlotte Tilbury's eye cream, and I went on with my usual items that I use in London, which actually are quite moisturizing. So this is one of my favorite foundations from Tom Ford, and this foundation is quite luminous and and uh, quite moisturizing but whichever way I've applied it on the skin that made all the difference I've already picked up some tan I did not need a lot of uh, foundation on I used the buffing brush so I was buffing my makeup into the skin really well my goal was to even out the skin tone with as thin layer as possible the buffing brush was the key it's the same theory as I have explained you in my original video working in a of fine thin layers applying as little product as possible onto the face you just don't want everything to be you know running around and sliding okay so once I buffed it I went over with my fingers and kind of like smoothed and pushed everything in even more then I used my shade and illuminate concealer from Tom Ford as well which I'm still getting used to it's not my favorite concealer but I'm still working it out let's put it this way and guys I finally got a new mirror so I can be doing makeup and not complaining that I cannot see what I'm doing I'm super happy about this little purchase from Amazon it also has like a little LED light in here I don't know if it does much but it's supposed to light up my face concealer I used quite generously I took the same buffing brush kind of like first spread the concealer in the areas where I wanted to highlight we do need those layers for the pictures on iPhone in the night obviously we didn't have professional camera with us I knew that if we were taking pictures 
pictures it's going to be on iPhone and iPhone loves a lot of makeup that's what I did first then with the clean brush I kind of went in and pushed everything back again just to remove the excess see I'm not swiping I'm kind of like pushing 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 then I let it sit for a bit so I want that to absorb in my skin got this new contouring cream from the brand PS this is a Primark's brand um, I think I've already showed you in my previous video I feel like it's a dupe for Charlotte Tilbury and it's actually quite a, a decent product it's just as messy as Charlotte Tilbury's one is it sets really quickly like much quicker than Charlotte Tilbury's one I feel like with Tilbury you have that time to blend the product around but with this one you really don't so you either have to be really precise or you have to uh, work really quickly once you are dabbed it on top of your face it's also really pigmented like there's a lot of product in there once it sets it's pretty bulletproof so this is oh, wonderful gosh you see how much like that was original dab then we have this and then I'm now dabbing the residue and this is how strong this product is and the color is pretty universal as well actually I can use it uh, on more fair skin tones but I just need to blend a little bit more and I can use it on medium skin tones so it's a really cool um, little product this one again the key is to create shadowing without making thick layers once it's on it's on and you guys know I adore products that stay on the face um, so this one is uh, now in my personal collection it's not fancy enough for me to use on my clients but generally is a really really decent product to have and a little bit here on the outer sides of the face again just the residue like everything has to be in a super fine thin thin layers not to move around throughout the night and you see I'm going back to my original brush so what it does is it just shears things down and picks off the excess of the product and while I'm working on the creams I'm also going to use this uh, primer beauty highlighter on the cheeks I find that with me and with my crow's feet I have to be really careful with the amount I'm applying so I have to again work in a super fine layers really really thin layers but also the same the same formula once it's on the face it really grips on and stays really well so there on the highest points on the cheeks I could actually a little bit here as well this is my cream product base done now in my original video I'm talking about the powders and that you should powder sparingly it is true especially if you've got oily skin but I will be brutally honest with you what I did for this party and it worked magic is I have used my mineralized skin finish powder from MAC in the medium plus shade what mineralized powder is supposed to do is that they have that water repelling properties in them so technically they kind of help the makeup to stay more long wearing more sweat proof more waterproof that night I did not care I knew that I will sweat a lot so I actually have gone and powdered a lot like a lot a lot more than what I would powder when I go out in UK now against all of my teachings that you should powder sparingly this trick worked personally for me and I mean if you live in a hot and humid environment give it a go but try mineralized powder or powder that has minerals in it for the water repelling properties so I've specifically targeted this area around here because I know that this is where most of my makeup is kind of creasing and moving throughout the night I went on and packed this area with powder everywhere else I've just kind of dusted across but underneath my eyes I really went in and powdered really really well I feel like because this is the mineralized powder it actually did repel the water really well I don't know I didn't have any other powder to try with me so maybe next time out of curiosity I will actually take a few different powders just so I can test it out on top of my powder I have added a little bit more of the powder contouring and I have used the Charlotte Tilbury film star duo duplicated all of the powders that I had around just to set them one more time with this one I went really lightly the only palette that I took with me for the eyes and kind of the face was this Florasis Phoenix palette it's a super beautiful palette has many different highlighters kind of blusher in the middle so I've used this blusher in the middle here it looks pretty drastic in color but actually the formula is really light so you can see 
it's it's not as red as it kind of appears to start with this is another fine layer of powder that would seal my makeup in place that stayed pretty well on the eyes i've used got to be brow gel i've used it every day when i didn't wear any makeup i even went for a swim with it once and my eyebrows stayed in place still number one product that i highly recommend everybody to have in their kit for the eyes for this party i wanted the eye to be really strong because i again it's a night and we were taking pictures on iPhone so I wanted to make sure my eyes are not gonna be like tiny eyes I wish I took false lashes with me because then I could have got away with not using a lot of eyeshadow and just have really good thick lash but of course I didn't so I had to improvise and I knew in order to make my makeup waterproof I needed to have a cream base in a form of kajal pencil or gel liner and of course I didn't take it with me don't don't just don't ask but luckily we had a house full of girls and my friend had a kajal from Chanel which worked magic it was not waterproof but it lasted all night whichever way I have applied it today I have this Jones Road black pencil which I'm going to apply in the same manner I did for this party in the jungle and I actually wasn't really careful with it either I just feel like we were running out of time all the time everything we were doing is like we wanted to go for dinner after we wanted to go for dinner we need to wash our hair and blah 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 and then by the time you must leave you're still not ready you know makeup is not ready and I just feel like it was such a rush first I thought I'm gonna create a really strong cat liner and of course as I was running out of time everything went its up so that liner have grown into a proper smoky eye in the end which is fine because it actually did work really well and on the pictures my eyes were super defined and of course in order to make it waterproof I needed to go over and add some eyeshadow on it the darkest eyeshadow I had with me was this brown shade from this Florasis palette and I just went over the liner and literally just sealed it in place because it was a night party I was not very careful it was gonna be hot and I also didn't know how well this makeup is going to sit throughout the night and I wasn't sure how messy it's going to become in the morning but Honestly guys, this makeup did not budge. Even when I came home around 10 or 11 in the morning, I couldn't take it off my face. But anyway, we'll get to this again. So I was pushing the eyeshadow on top of the kajal and that would set the kajal in place. And then that meant that the makeup would not budge throughout the night, even if you sweat. So I have created that cat shape for my initial look, but then I thought that from far away, this may still make my eye a little bit too kind of a narrow so I decided to add more definition around the crease and I have mixed in this this and this color together started off with a light shade to kind of mark the territory and then I gradually darkened it but for the crease pretty much I've only used the the eyeshadow there was no pencil in the crease and then I went in and darkened the inner part here and the outer part here what I had with me was this new Anastasia Beverly Hills mascara, which I am honestly obsessed with. I don't know what is in this formula, but it works with my lashes so well. It separates them and makes them a little bit thicker, but without making them clumpy. That's what I like, because some mascaras make my lashes thick and they stick them together. But this mascara is wonderful. And also before my trip, I have done lash lift, so my lashes were freshly curled so it was even easier to coat them in I have added million layers of mascara because I did not have any fake lashes with me I needed to make sure that my lashes look as full as possible all right guys so as you can see not the lightest makeup for a hot and humid environment but we were going out also remember dabbing a little bit of the same brown eyeshadow over my eyebrows just to kind of emphasize a little bit on them because they also can get a little bit washed out for the lips i actually had a super simple lip a line my lip a little bit i've only touched up lips when I felt that they were dry, I took my favorite new lipstick from um, Charlotte Tilbury with me, the Runway Royalty, which I actually ended up using a lot. All I cared for the lips is just so they stay hydrated throughout the night. The last thing that I feel made all the difference in order for it to stay and not to melt away is the setting spray. Of course, I didn't pack it. Of course, I didn't think about packing a setting spray. 
I don't know where my head was when I was packing, but I didn't have it with me. What I had with me, Osis number no. three hairspray. My holy grail hairspray working with clients, using it on my hair. It has a little drying texture to it. So once you apply it to the hair, it actually makes it a little bit more kind of grippy, a little bit more texture. And this is the hairspray that I have used on my face in order to seal the makeup that I have done for that night out in place. And guys, it worked magic and now I know you may say that oh my god why are you using hairspray on your face but guys I am coming from a very old-school dancing era back in the day we did not have any setting sprays for makeup it just didn't exist and the only way to make your makeup last throughout the night of hardcore dancing was to use a super strong hairspray that we use on the hair all over our face. I've done this million times back in the day when I was dancing and I didn't have any breakouts. We sweated a lot and the makeup stayed throughout the night. This is something that I personally don't mind doing to my face from time to time. And of course, in a situation where I didn't pack a setting spray, I had to improvise. I sweated throughout the night like crazy. The water was dripping down my face but I felt because of all of the thin layering sealed with this hairspray, the sweat was coming through, but it wasn't disturbing any layers, nothing smudged at all. But what I did throughout the night was I had a stash of tissues. It was just kind of patting the sweat off my face, not swiping anything. I was just like trying to pat, pat, pat. And I feel like that motion not only got rid of all the sweat, but it also kind of sealed the makeup back in place again. And honestly, by the time I got home at 11 a.m., I struggled to remove my makeup. It was really hard. I washed my face several times, I've double cleansed, and everything throughout the night just kind of adhered onto me so well, and everything was intact. Not a single thing, not even mascara, it didn't run. I didn't have any problem with my makeup whatsoever. The moment of truth. That day, I was not sparing with it. I've actually made sure that my face is sprayed really, really well. I mean, if it's not for you, no problem. There is plenty of super strong sprays available on the market for anybody. So you pick yours and you use the facial spray. But if you're stuck, this is also not a bad idea. Super ancient trick. All right, guys, thank you very much for joining me for this video. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope it was entertaining and useful enough for you. And if you're watching my video living in a hot and humid environment, then I look forward to hearing from you about how you keep your makeup intact throughout the day or the night. And of course, I'm going to link the original video up here above and also in the comment section below if you guys want to see the original one it's going to be waiting for you there thank you for sticking till the end and i see you on my next one